I'm Tanya altman Betridge. I'm a parent of a student here at Semper Elementary School. He's a sixth grader and he's been here since kindergarten. Um, I'm also a former president of the PTA here and have been actively involved in the school and really invested in seeing all of the kids here be successful. We've always loved the school and every teacher that my child has ever had has been a wonderful committed educator. And um, and I think the changes that we've seen have really been in those resources. Classes are getting bigger. We have parties in the classrooms and you can't even get in there. There's so many bodies packing these classrooms. My son's in a classroom of almost 35 students now where three years ago it was 25 in the sixth grade. And my, te my child's teacher is a wonderful teacher. And I see her struggle with keeping on top of that many different students, um, all of their different educational and individual needs. When we started this school, we were so happy. We actually moved to this neighborhood to go to this school. But for the first time, I'm starting to get really concerned that as my child transitions to middle school, as he goes to high school, that the schools aren't going to have the resources that they need to provide the investment in his education and in all the kids' education that's really vital to the future of the state. For me, what a furlough day means is it means it's a day that my child is in school. It's a missed educational opportunity. It's just that missed time in the classroom. I think time is already so short and they're already doing so much with so little um, resources in terms of time and supplies um, that just even one extra missed day or two in this case this year, even that one missed day can can be a huge deal to have to make up in terms of what they're missing in terms of instruction time, in terms of disrupting the flow of education, in terms of creating havoc with schedules, with parents that have to all of those things impact the families and the students and the teachers. You can feel it in the air that there's more tension, that the teachers are feeling more stressed, that they're feeling unappreciated. You can feel the impact of that salary reduction. You can feel the impact of all these debates over unions and, and overpay and compensation. You can feel it in, with the school secretaries, with the facilities management staff, with the teachers. The building just feels different, I think. And I do think that over the past three years, I've become more concerned. We do have, I think, more fees to pay. I think some parents really are struggling right now with the bus fees that they have to pay. Um, it, it hasn't been a terrible financial hardship for us, fortunately, but what we have seen is how much time our PTA spends fundraising, how much time the school spends fundraising for technology that they need. They don't have enough laptops. They don't have the smart boards that they need. And I, when I came in and started working with our school's PTA, I was excited about the opportunity to be involved as a parent, to really uh, get the community involved in the school and what it's sort of evolved over the past few years as these cuts go deeper and deeper and deeper is parents and are more and more having to raise money for basic education supplies. We're having to buy our teachers extra things because they're already having to spend so much of their own money to get the adequate you know pencils and pens and wipes and all of the things that they have to have in their classroom and so I think parents are really feeling that that the burden of fundraising. I've had people recently say, you know, just, it feels like we're just constantly having to raise money for outdoor lab, for computers, for the smart board technology. And it's just like a constant never ending fundraising battle. Uh, yes, yeah, so he is going to outdoor lab soon. And last year we were very concerned that he was after 50 years, the students in Jefferson County weren't gonna have that opportunity. I think it's an amazing, a, a, amazing opportunity. I know parents in other districts that have been like, what's that? And they don't, they don't know. And when we tell them about what that is, they're so excited about the opportunity for them to go out, be on their own a little bit for a little while, be a little independent, get that outdoor experience, get the astronomy and nature, you know, learning about nature and animals and hiking. And it's just a wonderful opportunity. And I know we had kids all out through this field on field day last year with stickers, raising money, trying really hard to save it. The kids really came together and the school really came together to try to raise money for that. But without a sustainable plan for decent education funding, those types of opportunities aren't going to be around. I am so thrilled that he's had the opportunity to participate in band this year. Um, it has been a tremendous source of engagement with school for him. He's a 12 year old boy. He's rather be playing video games and the band has given him more energy around school. He's happy to be here. He's excited to come to school on days he has band and his Band, his band instructor, who teaches at six different elementary schools, stays after school with him when he needs to, to you know, and he's had a wonderful opportunity that he's going to take now into middle and high school. And it would have been, I just can't even imagine if he wouldn't have had 
that kind of opportunity. And as he moves into middle school, I worry as we start thinking about where he wants to go to college and what he wants to do, is he going to have the opportunities to take the level of courses that he needs, the number of courses that he needs, to be really well prepared as he starts moving on in his education. It's a pretty deep systemic issue in this state and I think we really have to take a hard look at what our priorities are and where we're really going to spend our resources and where we're going to invest our dollars for our future. We can spend them on prisons or we can spend them to educate our children. We we can't continue in this cycle where we're continually underfunding. Our per pupil funding is so low in this state compared to other states, let alone the world, uh, in terms of how much we really invest in education for our kids. And if we keep going down that path, it's just not going to be public education in the state won't be sustainable. So I think for the board, for the legislature, need to prioritize how funding is being distributed to the schools. And I think that starts at the state. I think it involves repealing TABOR. I think it involves really looking at how education is funded and look at, at um, how dollars are spent and really coming together as a community and helping the community to understand the value of education. There are two very, very strong reasons for anyone in this state to want to invest more in education. The first is a good community neighborhood school like this one increases property values, it makes it attractive, people want to move into a neighborhood with a good school, and so I think that in and of itself is really important. Secondly, I think we have to think about our economy, our state. We live in one of the most beautiful states in the country, and it's a wonderful place to be, but what is our future going to be like if we don't have an educated workforce? The kids in this school are going to be our legislators, our doctors, our teachers in the future. And if we don't educate them now, they're going to leave the state for better opportunities, or um, or we're going to be in a situation where we don't have businesses attracted to the state because we don't have an educated workforce. You can give them all the tax breaks that they, you know, that you want, but a business isn't going to an aerospace engineering company is not going to locate here if they don't have an educated workforce to work with. So I think we have to th know that when we're in investing in public education, we're investing in our children, and this is the group of people that as we go into retirement, um, as our state moves forward, these kids are going to be the ones that are our leaders, that are our future. So I think making an investment in that is the most important thing.